All right, hi everybody. We're working through the trigonometry review. This is question four. This is determine the max and minimum points and the concavity and points of inflection for each of the following. We're going to start with y equals negative sine of 2x. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is we're going to take the derivative. Okay, it's a calculus question. We're going to take the derivative. So y primed is going to equal negative cosine. And actually, I can do a little bit better than that. I know where this is going at the end here. I'm going to end up multiplying by the derivative of the 2x, which will put a 2 in front. So this will be negative 2 cosine of 2x. Okay, now to figure out where the maximums and minimums are correct, basically I'm looking for critical numbers. Uh, sine is defined on the entire domain, so is cosine. Okay, so they're all real numbers. So there's no issue with it being undefined. And additionally, when I take the derivative, okay, this isn't undefined anywhere. So I'm really just interested in where the critical numbers resulting from where this is equal to zero. I'll divide by negative two, and so you're gonna get the cosine of two x is equal to zero. Okay, so where is that gonna occur? Well, the easiest way to solve that is basically just to assume that this is like a. And I'm gonna solve for this in general, even though this is looking for only for the specific domain between zero and two pi. I'm going to solve this in general. And what we'll see here is that cosine goes to zero at, at pi over two, sorry, at, at pi over two and negative uh, three pi over two, or sorry, or negative pi over two. Pi over two or positive three pi over two. So on the y-axis here. So two x will be pi over two plus n pi, okay, because these are going to repeat every pi radians, pi, where n is an element of the integers. And if I divide by 2, I'm going to get x is equal to pi over 4 plus n pi over 2, where n is an element of the integers. And this is where my, basically where this function is going to go to 0. The cosine function is going to go to 0. And this will correspond to the maximums and mins of the original function. Okay, so what i got to do here is, is now put these into the, the proper quadrants here. If I'm, basically what I'm doing here is I'm starting at pi over 4 in the first quadrant, and now I'm going to add, well, I'm going to add 2 pi over 4s, really. If I, if I put this as common denominators, this will become 2 pi over 4. So this will become 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. And if I add it again, I'm going to get a number that's, that's larger than the domain that I'm interested in. Now, to figure out whether these are maximums or mins, what i got to do is look at the number line. Okay, so here's, maybe we put the 0 here. And then we've got pi over 4, whoops, uh, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi at the very end here, 2 pi. Now, if you plug 0 in to our, our cosine function here, 2 times 0 is 0. Now pick pi over 4. If you plug pi over 4 into this, you're going to get pi over 2. So this is essentially finding the... The, this is referring to the cosines here in the first quadrant, okay? Because of that, uh, that, that stretch, that horizontal stretch, this is actually corresponding to the first quadrant. And cosine is positive in the first quadrant. But there's a negative out front, so this is going to end up decreasing, okay? Now, if I plug in 3 pi over 4 into this, this becomes 3 pi over 2. And so what's happened here is I'm jumping from from pi over 2 down to 3 pi over 2. In that little area right there, in quadrants 2 and 3, cosine is, is negative, but because the negative out front, this becomes a positive. If you plug in 5 pi over 4 into this, you take, you're take you going to take the cosine of 5 pi over 2, which is, again, bringing us up uh, to the positive y, the y-axis there. And in that area there, the cosine function is positive, but the negative out front here makes it negative. And so what we're seeing here is this is actually alternating. Negative, positive, negative, positive, so on and so forth. So the pi over 4 and the 5 pi over 4, okay, because I'm decreasing on the, uh, prior to it and then increasing afterwards, these correspond to mins. So my min here is going to be pi over 4, comma, and I'll figure out what that is and 5 pi over 4, comma, and we'll figure out what that is. To figure out what those are, I go back to the original expression, this negative sine of 2x. So plug in pi over 4 into, into the, the original function here. 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, and there's a negative in front, so this will be negative 1. 
And actually the exact same thing will happen if you plug in five pi over four, because you, the angle that you get is five pi over two, and the sine of that will be positive one, and the negative makes it negative one. Okay, so those are my minimums. My maximums will occur at the other values, three pi over four, and seven pi over four. Because in both cases, I am decre uh, sorry, increasing prior to that number and then decreasing afterwards. Now, plug those into the original. Uh, this becomes three pi over two, okay? Sine of three pi over two is negative one, and the negative in front makes it positive. So it becomes positive one. And then once again, just like the previous question, the exact same thing happens with seven pi over four, and I'll get positive one there. Good. So there you go. There's my maximum minimum points in that interval. Now, the next thing that I want to do is find the intervals of, of conca sorry, concavity, which means I got to take the second derivative. And so now looking back to the first derivative here, this was negative two cosine of two x. When I take the derivative of cosine, I'm going to get negative sine. The negatives will cancel, so my result will be positive. And I'm going to end up multiplying, because of the chain rule, by another factor of two. So this will become positive four sine of two x. Okay. Now, for me to understand the concavity, what I got to do is set that equal to zero. I'll divide by four. And so I'm looking for where the sine of x goes to zero. And I'm going to solve this just exactly the same way I did the previous question. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for this in general and then work towards the specific domain that I was given. Sine goes to zero when the angle is on the, when the terminal arm of the angle is on the positive x axis. So what that means here is 2x would equal multiples of pi, where n is an element of the integers. Okay, if I divide by 2, I'm going to get x is equal to n pi over 2, where n is an element of the integers. So now, the specific values that I'm interested in, as we go around here, would be where n is equal to 0, which would make this equal to 0. But now notice that that's not included in the domain. So 0 is not included. So the first value that would be included would be pi over 2. Then, if I plug a 2 in, I'll get 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. 3 pi over 2. And then the next one would be 4 pi over 2, but that would be 2 pi, and we're not including 2 pi, okay? Because we've got, again, open brackets on, on those. So now, I look at my number line here, okay? And this is going to be from 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then out here would be 2 pi. If I check these intervals into my uh, second derivative, if I plug in zero in here, sine of zero is zero, the whole thing goes to zero. If I plug in pi over two into this, two times pi over two is pi. So what that means is all the angles between zero and pi over two would correspond to the, the, top, uh, the top two quadrants here, and we know that sine is positive there. If you plugged in pi into this, I would, this would take us up to two pi, which would mean from here to here corresponds to the bottom two uh, quadrants. The sign is negative there. And we see, again, that this is going to alternate. It's going to look like this. So this thing's going to be concave up on the interval 0 to pi over 2. And then, whoops, sorry, union. Union pi to 3 pi over 2. And then it'll be concave down pi over 2 to pi. Union 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. Okay, now I got to look for the points of inflection, and because the concavity is changing on either side here, it's actually fairly easy to, to figure those out. Now, I'm, I'm running out of room up here, so I'm actually going to take the points of inflection up here. Okay, sorry about that, but just, I guess, poor planning on my part here. My points of inflection will be where x is pi over 2, and if I go back to the original, sine of, okay, 2 times pi over 2 is going to be pi, sine of pi would be 0. The next one will be where x is equal to pi. Sine of 2 times pi is going to be 0, going to be 0. And then if I take 3 pi over 2, if I plug 3 pi over 2 into the original, 2 times that will be 3 pi. Sine of 3 pi is once again 0. And so those are my inflection points. Pi, uh, pi over 2 comma 0, pi comma 0, 3 pi over 2 comma 0. And there we go. That's all that this question is asking for.